I'm guessing you're watching this video because you've heard about Garfield Memorial Microchurch and you're intrigued or confused and would like to understand more. If that's the case, this is the right video for you, so keep watching. In this video, you'll get a better understanding of microchurch by hearing first what microchurch is not, you know, learning by contrast. Then, and only then, I'll tell you what microchurch is, including a great example from the Bible for those of you concerned about that sort of thing. Finally, I'll let you know how you can connect with a Garfield Memorial Microchurch near you. Let's talk about what microchurch is not. We need to do that because if you spend a lot of time in church or heard much about churches, you might get the idea that microchurch is just like regular church. Did you hear the air quotes there? But it's not. And that may excite you or worry you depending on how you feel about regular church. First, microchurch is not a study group. When you gather with a microchurch, you won't be studying a book, workbook, or the Bible. Those kinds of groups can be great and Garfield Memorial has multiple options if you're looking for a study group, but microchurch is not one of them. We think that's good news. For one thing, no writing. For another thing, when you miss a week or three, and you will, you won't get behind because there's nothing to get behind on. Second, microchurch is not a prayer group. There will be no instruction for everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes. There'll be no going around the room to share prayer requests. There will be no one saying, would you be willing to open or close in prayer? You don't even have to know how to pray to have a great time with microchurch. Don't get me wrong, prayer is great and praying is great and prayer groups are great. If you're interested in connecting with one, check out House of Prayer on our website, but microchurch is not a prayer group. Third, microchurch is not a service group. You're not gathering to lead, serve, coordinate, or accomplish anything. We've got lots of opportunities for that already, including, but not limited to, Praise Band, Tech Team, Hospitality Team, Children's Ministry, Kids Club, Youth Group, Summer Mission Trips, and like a bazillion outreach teams. They are wonderful, but they're not microchurch. Finally, microchurch is not a mini worship service. Yeah, I know, you can breathe a giant sigh of relief. No one will pull out a guitar, kitar, or even a dulcimer and say, now let's all join in singing anything. And no one, and I mean no one, will preach at you at microchurch. And if someone does preach at you at microchurch, you let me know and I'll take care of it. That's what microchurch is not. Now let's do a mental stretch and try to wrap our brains around what microchurch is. Microchurch is a weekly gathering of diverse people who are glad to see you when you're there and who miss you when you're not. Sounds simple, right? That's because it is. It's a small community where you are seen, not invisible, known, not anonymous, and loved, not judged, rejected, neglected, belittled, or manipulated. Instead, you are treated with the dignity of a full-fledged human being who bears the image of God because that's what you are. And in microchurch, there are no prerequisites to being seen, known, and loved. You don't have to take a class, make a public declaration, give money, or do anything. It doesn't even matter what you believe or don't believe about God and the church. If you're a human being and you're there, you'll be seen, known, and loved. Even if you're not there, you'll still be known and loved, just not seen. Because you're not there. Most microchurches will gather around the table in someone's home or maybe in a park or restaurant, but never in a church building. Some microchurches will gather around the table to eat. Did someone say cinnamon rolls? Some microchurches will play games. Some might even eat and play games. And some microchurches will gather online because some people are geographically distant and some want and need to gather virtually to avoid catching a virus which shall remain nameless. Whether you gather face to face to eat or play or gather virtually, all microchurches will gather to connect diverse people who share a common brokenness with Jesus. And that's the point of microchurch. Microchurch is not one more thing to do, accomplish, achieve, support, or promote. It's not one more obligation to fulfill. We have enough of those. Dare I say, too many of those. Microchurch is time and space to connect and love. All of this means microchurch is a safe gathering to invite friends, neighbors, and co-workers knowing they'll be loved and safe too and get some tacos. If, as you're hearing this, you're saying to yourself, microchurch doesn't sound very churchy or Christian enough, let me invite you to consider two very important people, though neither they nor anyone else thought they were particularly important at the time. I'm talking about Naomi and Ruth. If you don't know their story, let me explain. Wait, there's no time for that? Let me sum up. Naomi and her husband Elimelech were Israelites, but there was a drought in Israel, so they took their two sons and moved to the country of Moab. While in Moab, their sons married two local women named Orpah and Ruth. Things were good for a while, then they weren't. Within 10 years, Naomi's husband and sons died, leaving Naomi, Orpah, and Ruth alone and vulnerable in a very patriarchal society. Eventually, 
eventually the drought in Israel ended and Naomi decided to go back to Israel. She loved her daughters-in-laws very much, but she knew that for their own safety and security, they needed husbands and she could not provide any for them. So she advised them with many tears to return to their families of origin. Orpah took Naomi's advice and with many tears left her mother-in-law to go back to her family of origin. Ruth, on the other hand, told Naomi, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. Ruth stayed with Naomi and this woman who was ethnically, culturally, ethically, generationally, and religiously different from Naomi, not only stayed with Naomi, but followed Naomi's God and participated fully and significantly in God's mission for the world. How did she do that? By becoming one of the great, great, great grandmothers of Jesus himself. Notice this, as far as we know, Naomi and Ruth never had a Bible study because they didn't have a Bible, never joined a prayer group, never went to worship service because Jews worshiped in the temple in Jerusalem while they lived in Moab, and never did a service project together. But we can be sure that they ate together, laughed together, cried together, did life together. And it was this relationship, this personal connection, that led Ruth to say to Naomi, wherever you go, I will go. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. It wasn't doctrine, membership, or scholarship that led Ruth to stay with Naomi and become a participant in God's plan for the world. It was a loving, humble, diverse human connection. Loving, humble, diverse connections are what microchurch is all about. If a Garfield Memorial microchurch sounds like something you want to explore, visit garfieldchurch.org microchurch to connect with a microchurch near you.